Hi, welcome to Mount Pleasant Online. We're thrilled that we can bring you these mini services into your homes. Keep an eye on our social media pages. We're trying to update them as regularly as we can for you. If you're a little soldier watching today, get your parents to keep a lookout because your video is coming up as well. We've got a great word from God to bring to you this morning from Mike Taylor. He was due to come and preach with us this month, but instead has recorded this message for us. And we're so thankful to him for that. I'm going to pray and then Leah is going to read to us from God's word. And that's going to lead us into our worship this morning. Lord, I just thank you for every person that is watching today. I pray that each heart and each mind will be filled with your spirit. Our prayer today is that your will will be done. Speak to us, Lord, through the songs that we're about to sing and through the words that we're about to hear. Challenge us, Lord. Lift our eyes to seek you first, above all else. Holy Spirit, come. Amen. I'm going to be reading from Psalms 95. It's time to sing. Come on, everyone. Let's sing for the joy to the Lord. Let's shout our loudest praises for God who saved us. Everyone come meet his face with a thankful heart. Don't hold back your praises. Make him great by your shouts of joy. For, um, for the Lord is the greatest of all, King God over all the other gods. In one hand he holds the mysteries of the earth, and in the other he holds the heights, heights, mountain peaks. He's the owner of every ocean, the engineer, the sculptor of earth itself. Come and kneel before, before this creator, God. Come and bow before the mighty God, our majestic maker, for we are the loved ones he cares for, and he is the God we worship. So drop everything else and listen to his voice.
everybody at Mount Pleasant Church. Um, great to be joining you this morning via technology. Um, uh, it's great that uh, in these interesting times that we have technology, that means we can still stay connected together. Framing is something that's well known within um, the medical, uh, mental health kind of uh, field. And framing is about how we frame the situations in our life. And I was just watching um, uh, a podcast from Paul Scanlon at the beginning of this whole pandemic outbreak, and um, it just really challenged me on how we frame it. You know, uh, as humans, we have the ability to frame everything, and it can be one of the most powerful things we can do, and one of the most negative things we can do, um, because we we um, have to, we frame everything that we have in our world, and um, our past experiences can affect that. Um, our health, our how much sleep we've had, all those kind of things shape how we frame the situations in front of us. You know, we we can all, you know, you can have a great picture, but a frame can ruin it, you know, um, uh, like whenever artists do uh, great pieces of work and they get displayed in galleries, uh, once the art is formed, uh, the creator of the exhibition spends a lot of time how that picture gets framed. They, 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 they think about the lighting in the room. They think about that. What they, 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 they think about what frame will make that picture, uh, look different to different people. You know, I, I can show you one picture in one environment and show you another environment and you'll have two different emotional responses to it, you know, and we all have choices. We all have choices, how we frame the situations in front of us. Uh, political points of view our spiritual point of view our theology all frame those those things frame the world that we see it there's a great story in, in luke 9 as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven jesus resolutely set out for jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him who went into a Samarian village to get something ready for him but the people there did not welcome him because he was heading from jerusalem when the disciples James and John saw this, they asked the Lord, Do you want us to call down fire from heaven and destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. So Jesus has sent them ahead, the disciples, to check out this village. And because of where they were coming from, the people in the village said, No, they can't come. They didn't acknowledge who Jesus was. Their their frame of Jesus was wrong. But the disciples' framing was even worse. They, they'd been with Jesus for the last uh, four years. And... and um, over his ministry and and their frame they had they hadn't picked up on the frame that jesus was about peace and love and grace um so their natural response was let's call down fire and kill them all you know um they were operating out of their freshly frame not out of a frame uh that that god that jesus had given them and it's funny jesus rebukes them and i probably think there was a little bit more in that sentence than jesus rebuked them it probably would have been as like do you not know who i am do you not know what i've been teaching you for the last so long you have you not been on this journey with it why is your frame one to destroy people and not a frame of grace you know we we can spend a lot of time um trying to change what's in front of us trying to change the picture but uh, so the picture is the one thing 
we probably don't have a lot of control over, especially in the season we find ourselves now stuck in a world that's in the, in the grips of a, a global pandemic. We That's the fact. That's what's in front of us. And we can't change that picture. We can help influence it, but we can't change it. So it's important as Christians that we change our frame, that we change how we frame this picture. You know, what is the message that we are speaking? You know, I've watched over the last couple of weeks uh, a lot of church pastors um and in their tone, in their frame, there's fear. Um, and, and I'm like, hey, right now as a church, we should be the people putting out a message of hope, of a destiny, of future, of we believe in a God that saw this even before it even came to reality. God saw this coming. God's prepared us. We're equipped to do this. We need to be framing this situation with love and grace. And like, we've got this. Our God has got this. We've got this. We, we're, we're ready for this. We can move forward in faith in this season. You know, the Jews missed, they missed out who Jesus was because their frame was they were waiting for a ruler to come back and to overthrow the Romans and deliver them from captivity and to just come storming in with an army. And here turns up a baby in a manger because their frame was wrong. They missed the greatest miracle for humankind. Uh, Jesus who died for our, for our sins so that we can be reconciled back to God. They missed it because their frame was wrong. You know, no one saw this season coming, you know, but we cannot frame this season with fear and dismay. We have to frame it with hope and positivity. You know, we have a framework in, in, in the Bible. It's, it's the, the Ten Commandments and um, it's more than Ten Commandments, but we have ways that we can frame that. And so often the church has framed that through through judgment, through um these are set of rules and, and we've enforced them. But uh, when Jesus came, he changed those frames. Those, those commandments become frames for us to live a life of prosperity, a life of grace, a life of freedom. And, and we need to frame those things in our lives as positivity and as, 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 as things that give us life, not things that bring us judgment. You know, the frame around those, when we talk to the world right now, um, we, we need to be bringing the reality of our faith to them with a framework of grace and love and forgiveness. One of the, one of the interesting things that I've noticed over, over this probably, was it three and a bit weeks now that church has been online, is um, church isn't talking human. Um, by that I mean that we are talking in a language that the world cannot understand our frames. We are I've, I've putting out... 50 minute sermons and expecting people in their living rooms to sit still we are uh doing long uh deep worship sessions you know this is you know, right now uh, let me tell you my frame about this season is this is the biggest evangelistic opportunity that the church has had in my lifetime i'm 45 because right now it is so easy to invite someone to church because all you do is you send them a Facebook link or you, a link or a YouTube link and they log on. But if they log on and they don't understand and they don't see uh, the world as we see it, they see um, things that they just switch off to. You know, what we need to be doing as a church is praying and asking God to give us the wisdom to frame Jesus in a way that the world can understand. We need to be the conduit in the middle to show, to show people who our Jesus is, what he means to us. What, what, when we worship and praise God, what does that look like? And, and, you know, and it needs to be in bite-sized pieces. It needs to be in small nuggets, you know, because we live in a, a generation where you can flick from channel to channel. So we need to be mindful and wise how we're framing what we're putting church out. I would probably, my advice would be to any church right now is to take the frame that you called church before this pandemic and throw it in the bin and start again. Start thinking, how do I express Jesus to a world that has no point of reference who he is? How do I express Jesus to a church and, uh, and what we do, this thing that we call church, to a world when all they understand is that we sit in pews and sing hymns? And we all know that. that we all know that's not true for all of us that are taking our time out to sit down and hear me speak this morning are people that are passionate about their faith. 
you know so we we have a we have a, an opportunity now to get our passion our frame of the world and the fact that <clears throat> yes there's a virus going around people are getting sick but we still have a hope and a destiny in Jesus we need to get that frame in a uh, a relevant uh, a way across to the people in our world we've been sharing our youtube clip for our sunday service i Helen shared it the other day with all the parents that I coach rugby with and about four or five of them tuned in and then responded. Uh, we sent the clip to my cousin. She lives on a canal boat the other day and she said, can I share it with the whole canal boat community? So everybody on the Kennet Ken and Avon Canal got a link to our church service and people responded. who is our coach who has been training us you know we have a relationship with the creator of the universe with god and you know this is not a surprise to him so i think it's really important that we look at our lives and frame it on the things that god has already put in it uh, a lot of people uh, uh, are panicking and a lot of people are going oh you know uh, but let me tell you, if you realize that God has been, if you've asked God to be in control of your life, um, you can look back over past experiences and realize that he's installed stuff in you for this season. Um, you know, uh, we're probably financially OK for the next three months. But after that, it's going to be a challenge for us. But because for me and my family, when I look back through my journey and my walk of faith with God, I've seen him. Uh, miraculously put shopping on my doorstep uh, the house I live in he miraculously gave me £10,000 to buy so I can either frame the next three months in worry or I can frame it in knowing that God's in my corner God has provided for me in the past and God will provide for me again so just to close I would just encourage you in this season to evaluate the frames that you have in your life are they frames that come from heaven or are they frames that have come from your past experiences, your negative experiences? You know, whilst we're in this season where we have a lot of downtime, a lot of time to reflect, I just encourage you just to reflect on these things. And where you're struggling with some things in life, maybe you just need to read some scripture over your life. Just pray for yourself or get someone to pray for you. And I just want to remind you as well in the Bible, Jesus says to his disciples that he will build his church and nothing will come against it. So whatever the world throws at us, the framework when it comes to our faith and comes to our church is that we are on the winning side and there's nothing the devil can do to stop us. So we just need to live boldly by faith and claim everything that God has for us and have an expectancy that in this season we see the church grow, lives get saved, people get healed and Jesus' name gets lifted up. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having me with you. Hope to see you soon in the flesh. Take care and stay safe. See you all soon.
Oh, his love. 